a banner to proclaim the wonder of your mercy, Lord, the beauty of your grace. You would even pardon me, bring me to this place. I stand before you. Welcome to our Ash Wednesday service and the beginning of Lent. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's Passion and Resurrection, and it became the custom of the Church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful, were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. In this manner, the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior and of the need that all Christians continually have to renew our repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Church, to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting and almsgiving, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word, and to make a right beginning. Let us now pray for grace, that we may faithfully keep this Lent. Let's pray together. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made, and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Psalm 51 Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love, because of your great compassion, Blot out the stain of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt, 
Purify me from my sin. For I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. Against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. You will be proved right in what you say, and your judgment against me is just. For I was born a sinner, yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. But you desire honesty from the womb, teaching me wisdom even there. Purify me from my sins, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Oh, give me back my joy again. You have broken me. Now let me rejoice. Don't keep looking at my sins. Remove the stain of my guilt. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence, and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach your ways to rebels, and they will return to you. Forgive me for shedding blood, O God who saves. Then I will joyfully sing of your forgiveness. Unseal my lips, O Lord, that my mouth may praise you. You do not desire a sacrifice, or I would offer one. You do not want a burnt offering. The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart, O God. Look with favor on Zion and help her. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. The reading is taken from Psalm 32. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and whose spirit there is no deceit. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me, My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Surely in the rush of great waters they shall not reach him. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. 
Be not like a horse or a mule without understanding, which must be curbed with bit and bridle, or it will not stay near you. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, the shout for joy, all you upright in heart. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Once a year on Ash Wednesday, and then for the rest of the season of Lent, up until Holy Week, we have the opportunity as individual Christians and as a church to collectively notice, confess, and really think about our willful opposition to the will of God. And we have to face two realities. We confront, first of all, our own physical mortality, and two, our sin. Our Anglican tradition offers this service where the worshiper symbolically receives the sign of the cross on the forehead. Now, I know that you're online, so that's not going to happen. But you remember when we sign with the sign of the cross, the ashes that were taken from the Palm Sunday service uh, the previous year. And we use the words, remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. That is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 3. After Adam and Eve are confronted with their sin and their total disobedience, and then, of course, the sad consequences of human frailty, namely, death. And like Adam and Eve, we have disobeyed. We have rebelled against God and are under the same judgment, death. Two deaths, actually. Physical death and sin, which is spiritual death. One thing is for certain, our mortality is a given. So much of our culture, of course, spends a lot of time, money and effort, trying to, in fact, deny death. Aging in our day is almost like a curse. So we try to distract ourselves away from the inevitability of life's end. And Lent, of course, is a time for us to humble ourselves, to look at ourselves. It's a reality check. Remember that you and I are dust, and to dust we shall return. We obviously cannot choose our birth. Sadly, in our day, we've legalized choosing our death. But ultimately, these two things are in the Lord's hands. Humility says, I can't command these things. I am in God's hands. For God is my creator. He made me. He sustains me. And one day he will recreate me when he returns. And the faithful will rise in the resurrection from the dead. So we don't need to consume ourselves with death because God has called us to live in the fullness of life now. And of course, there is a day coming when he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There'll be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain anymore. All things are gone forever. Amen. No more death. But we also have to think about the other reality, the other kind of death that I mentioned. Very, very unpopular these days, the whole notion of human sin. The apostle tells us, for the wages of sin is death. In our day, I don't know what's more unpopular, death or the idea of sin. Even in many churches today, the idea that people are basically sinful is not even talked about. Sometimes it's even denied. In our culture, what do you usually hear? People are basically good, right? But 
Of course, that is not what the Bible teaches. In fact, it's the total opposite. And that is why we need a Savior, the Lord Jesus. We don't like being called self-willed or self-centered. And especially we don't like someone telling us we need to place restraints on our personal freedoms. Me, myself, and I have become the very center of many people's universe. But we know the devastating consequences of such an attitude. And David reminds us of that in Psalm 32. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of night. But I acknowledge my sin to you, and I did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. You know, it it takes a lot of energy to try to deny sin. But we do need to face reality. And Lent is that time when we spend more time thinking about this. It is a time to humble ourselves, to look at our human mortality and take a real honest look at our hearts. But it's also a time that is leading us to the power, to the love of God displayed in the cross of Jesus Christ. And of course, we celebrate that during Holy Week and Easter. You see, it is the love of God. It is the mercy of God that leads you and I to repentance. John chapter 1 Verse 8 tells us, if we claim we have no sin, we're only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he's faithful, he is just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all wickedness. If we claim we have not sinned, we're calling God a liar and showing that his word has no place in our hearts. And so let this be our segue to the next part of our service where we confess our sin. Let us pray. Litany of Penitence Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you, to one another, and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ we have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. We confess to you, Lord. Our anger, at our own frustration, and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord. Our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts, and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord. Our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Lord. Accept our repentance, O Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbor, and our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. 
Accept our repentance, Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation. That we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord. Bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Let's continue in prayer. Show favor to your people, O Lord, who turn to you in weeping, fasting, and prayer. For you are a merciful God, full of compassion, long-suffering, and abounding in steadfast love. You spare when we deserve punishment, and in your wrath you remember mercy. Spare your people, good Lord, spare us. In the multitude of your mercies, look upon us and forgive us. Through the merits and mediation of your blessed Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Finally, I confessed all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide my guilt. I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord, and you forgave me. All my guilt is gone. Let us pray. O Lord our God, grant us grace to desire you with our whole heart, that desiring you we may seek you, and that seeking you we may find you, and that finding you we may love you, and that loving you we may serve you, and that we may hate those sins for which you have delivered us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's continue in prayer. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ desires not the death of sinners, but they may turn from their wickedness and live. He has powered and commanded his ministers to pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. He now pardons and absolves all who truly repent and with sincere faith believe his holy gospel. For this reason, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that our present deeds may please him, the rest of our lives may be pure and holy, and that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord our God, grant us grace to desire you with our whole heart, that desiring you we may seek you, and that seeking you we may find you, and that finding you we may love you, and that loving you we may hate those sins from which you have delivered us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And please join me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of glory died, my riches
you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. May you have a holy and blessed Lent.